Hello everyone, welcome back to another series of videos. For today, we will talk about mediation with multiple predictors. But before we continue, I'm inviting everyone to please subscribe to my channel. About 90% of the people who are viewing these lectures and tutorials are not subscribed. So I would really appreciate it if you can help me by subscribing. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is the model that we will test for today. So as you can see, it's a mediation model. However, it's not a simple mediation model. There are multiple predictors. Uh, but before we continue, let's first review what mediation is. So when we say mediation, it's a kind of statistical modeling wherein we argue that the effects of a certain predictor or in this case, a certain set of predictors on the outcome variable can be accounted for, can be explained by another variable. And that variable that accounts for these effects is what we refer to as the mediator. So a few terms that we need to discuss, the effect of these predictors on the outcome variable prior to accounting for the mediator is what we refer to as the total effect. So the effect of belongingness on math proficiency prior to any mediation is called the total effect, so as the effect of disciplinary climate and teacher support. The indirect effect is the effect of belongingness on math proficiency as accounted for by the mediator. Belongingness, disciplinary climate, and teacher support all have hypothetically indirect effect on math proficiency, which are the effects that can be accounted for or explained by math engagement. And whatever effect is not accounted for by math engagement, the residual effects of belongingness, disciplinary climate, and teacher support on math proficiency, that is what we refer to as indirect effect. So remember these terms because they will come up later on when we run the analysis. So for this specific model, as I have been discussing, we have three predictors. So these are belongingness, disciplinary climate, and teacher support, all of which are experienced by students who are our sample for this particular study. And hypothetically, they influence performance in math or math proficiency. And it can be argued that the reason why Students who experience belongingness in school, a sense of disciplinary climate, and teacher support, uh, the reason why they perform better in math is because by experiencing this on when, or when they experience this, they become more engaged in their math courses. And therefore, if they're more engaged, hypothetically, they learn more and so they should display better math proficiency. And in this case, we will be testing the model controlling for some key demographic variables, particularly sex or biological sex, and also ESCS, which, which refers to economic, social, and cultural status. So this is the model that we will be testing. Uh, and we will test that using our software of choice, which is JASP. So again, JASP is a, an open source software. You can download this from the internet, install it in your laptops or in your PC, and you can run uh, several types of analysis, including but not limited to descriptives, t-test, ANOVA, mixed model, regressions, uh, frequency tables or chi-square, factor analysis, machine learning, network analysis, process, which, will, which we will use, you know, reliability, SEM, and uh, a number of other modules are available for your utilization. But specifically for this, we will use this module, which is the process module. So these are our variables. So we have a sex, which is categorical. I have coded them as such. So I've coded female as zero, male as one. So we have a separate variable here where in the uh, sex is coded, age, sense of belongingness, disciplinary climate, teacher support, math engagement or math perseverance, ESCS, and the measure of math proficiency. Before we proceed to uh, testing the mediation model, let's run some basic analysis, particularly 
the descriptives. Descriptives will be very much useful, especially there are some variables here which we can use to describe our sample in the method section. So let me enter the variables. I normally enter the variables in the following sequence. In this case, the outcome variable followed by the predictor variables followed by the mediator and then my control variables uh, and then I want to throw in age as well because this will be useful in describing the sample later on. I also want to click on transpose descriptive because I like that view better wherein the variables are in the first row and then for the statistics so I know that I have a total of 6,311 participants, but we don't need to display that here. So I'm going to uncheck this. There are no missing values, so I'm going to uncheck that as well. I need the median. I need the standard deviation. I don't really need the maximum or the minimum. So this is essentially what I need from my descriptives. There is a measure of average sex here and standard deviation for sex. Of course, that doesn't make sense because this is supposed to be a categorical variable. So we ignore this. We don't report this. But instead, we, what we want is the frequency distribution for sex. And we can simply go to tables and click on frequency tables. And when we do there, so you have the frequency for zero which is female so this means to say that there are 3229 females which comprise 51.165 percent of the sample uh, and then the rest are male so this will be useful in describing the sample in the method section all right so next we need to compute for the basic associations among our variables so we go to regression and then we click on correlation. So same sequence, I prefer outcome variable followed by the uh, predictor variables followed by math followed by the control variables sex and ESCS. In other situations, I would have probably included age uh, as another variable in the correlation matrix, but considering that our sample is very homogeneous, so these are 15, 16 year old students. I decided to no longer include this. So this is our correlation matrix. We want to simplify that. So in here per cell, you can see the correlation coefficient and then the p-value. Uh, but to simplify that, we uncheck report significance. So that removes the p-values. But to know which of these coefficients are significant, we simply click on flag significant correlations. And correlations that are significant, an asterisk would appear beside the coefficient. And the asterisks, whether there's one, there's two, or there's three asterisks, mean the following. So we have a legend here. So if there's one asterisk, then the coefficient is significant at 0 0.05. If there are two, the coefficient is significant at 0 0.01. If there are three, the coefficient is significant at 0 0.001. Okay, so we can see here that math proficiency is positively correlated with sense of belongingness, disciplinary climate, teacher support, as well as math person. Sex has a negative relationship with math proficiency. So this means to say that females tend to perform better in math. How do we know that it's females? Because if you look at the coding of females, female is zero, male is one. So this means to say that the lower sex, which is zero, female has a higher math proficiency considering this negative valence in the coefficient. So this suggests that females tend to perform better in math proficiency. And then lastly, as expected, ESCS or economic, social, and cultural status has a positive relationship with math proficiency as well. Those with higher ESCS tend to have better math proficiency. 
these significant correlations justify why we need to include sex and ESCS as control variables. But ultimately, the decision on whether or not to include demographic variables as control, of course, has to be supported by the literature review. All right, uh, and so finally, let's run our mediation model using the process module. So we click on process and then we choose the classical process model. We have to input our dependent variable, which is math, and then our predictors would include our, of course, predictor variables. This also includes the mediator and our control variables, sex and ESCS. And then we build our model here. So since we have three multiple predictors, so let's create pathways for those three. So the first one would be belongingness, two, math proficiency, mediated by math engagement. So that's the first one. That would be this one, belongingness, to math proficiency mediated by math engagement. And then we add the two other series. So disciplinary climate to math engagement mediated by the same thing. And then for the third one, teacher support predicting math mediated by math perseverance. And then we add our control variables, which is sex predicting math but this time uh, it's not mediated by anything it's a direct effect so we choose direct and then the same thing for ESCS predicting math and direct so this is our model and then we have some options here let's click on standardized estimates we might as well also click on R squared. So it's running. Let's wait for the results. So this is our model. Again, disciplinary climate, teacher support, belongingness, predicting math as mediated by math engagement. And then we have our control variables here. Okay, so if we try to take a look at the model fit based on the R squared, it suggests here that this particular model explains 21.2% variance in math performance or math proficiency. So we simply convert the R squared value into a percentage to make it more sensible to us. Whereas 13.7% of the variation in math engagement are predicted by these three variables, these three predictors. All right, so this is the result. So first, let's take a look at the total effect. So this is what we want to pay attention first. So what is the total effect? As I have explained a while ago, so this refers to the effect of the predictor variables on the outcome variable prior to any mediation. Uh, and we also include here the control variables sex and ESCS. So this is your unstandardized regression coefficient. So these are the coefficients based on the raw score. These are the standard error values. And then we compute a z-score. And these z-scores are evaluated by these probability values. And these are our standardized regression coefficients. So what we can say here is that the, the effects of belongingness, discipline, teacher support, sex, and ESCS on math proficiency seem to be all significant. Specifically, belongingness, discipline, teacher support seem to have positive effects on math proficiency, same as uh, ESCS. Whereas, as what the correlation suggested a while ago, females tend to perform better in math proficiency okay so these are the standardized regression coefficients uh, which you will uh, use in our report and then these are the confidence interval values so these are the intervals around the unstandardized regression coefficients okay so those are the total 
effects. Now, let's try to look at the indirect effect. So, are the effects of belongingness, discipline, and teacher support on math, can they be accounted for by math perseverance? So, is the reason why belongingness, discipline, and teacher support influences improved math proficiency is because they lead to higher math engagement. Uh, and so, we find that in here, so indirect effects. Specifically, we look at these. Belongingness to math perseverance to math proficiency, disciplinary climate, uh, teacher support to math perseverance, and then uh, math uh, engagement to math proficiency. So that's exactly what we said here in our model. So same thing. So these are the unstandardized regression coefficients. These are the standardized regression coefficients. Uh, and then these are the p-values, uh, which suggests that, yes, we have three significant indirect effects. This suggests that, yes, math engagement do mediate the relationship between belongingness, discipline, teacher support, and math proficiency. Now, to make this much more sensible, we also want to ask, what is the coefficient uh, for this? No, belongingness to math engagement. What is the coefficient for this? What is the coefficient for this? And the same thing, what is the coefficient from math engagement to math proficiency? And we get those answers from another table, which is the path coefficient. So the impact of belongingness to math perseverance, okay, we can find it here. So these describe this particular path, that path, and then the path from discipline to math engagement, and then the path from teacher support to math engagement. So you can see that all of these are significant and that the coefficients are positive. So, higher belongingness leads to higher math engagement, perceived disciplinary climate leads to higher math engagement, uh, and perceived teacher support leads to higher math engagement. As to the effect of math engagement on math proficiency, we can find it here. So, from per, uh, math engagement to math proficiency. And as you can see, the effect is also positive. So after the mediation, what about the residual or the direct effects? The direct effects can be found here. So again, the direct effect is the effect of belongingness on mathematics, disciplinary climate on mathematics, teacher support on mathematics that cannot be accounted for by the mediator. So same thing, we have the same values in here. So this means to say, considering that all of them are still significant, this means to say that belongingness, disciplinary climate, and teacher support seem to have an influence on math proficiency that is not necessarily accounted for by math engagement. Perhaps it could be via some other mechanism, or perhaps these variables do exert actual direct effects on math proficiency. So that is how you run mediation using JASP, particularly the process module, testing a model wherein we have multiple predictors, one outcome, one mediator, and then a couple of control variables. So in the next video, I will talk about how to convert all of these into APA formatted tables. All right, so a link will appear in uh, the corners of this particular video. So please click on that. Okay, so thank you very much. Again, if you've stayed up to this point, I really appreciate it. And I'm inviting you to please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.